No, this one we didn't do in class. I asked you to do it um, on your own. So the while block is useful when you want your, uh, your program to loop until a certain event happens or a different condition is met. So for example, maybe you want an alarm to sound if someone shakes their micro bit. Right? In order to turn the alarm off, you press button A. So until you press the button, the alarm should continue to sound. So you can use a while block with a nested repeat block to do this. So let's do this. So the while loop. So you're gonna create a new project and we're gonna name it alarm clock. Okay, so alarm clock, create. There we go. So it's just to delete the start and forever blocks from the workspace. Okay, so let's uh, let's do that. So here's my start, delete, and forever. So from the input toolbox drawer, drag an on shake block onto the workspace. So here's the input, and we're gonna do on shake. Okay, so on shake. So there you go. Yeah. Everything needs to be gone by 240 minutes. 240? Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so from the loop toolbar drawer, it's just to drag a while block to the workspace and drop it inside the on shake block. All right, so where is the Y? That's under the loops. Let me get rid of this. So under loops, it says while. All right, so while, and I'm going to put it inside the shake. So notice that there's a true condition attached to the while loop by default. So while this is true, something should happen, right? So recall from the previous lesson that a conditional expression may evaluate to true or false, right? So in this case, the default true block always evaluates to true. So this while loop will repeat forever. So have you come across another block that loops over and over and over again? What's, what, what was the block that did that. Anyone want to remember? Uh, the four? No. Um, it's another block that loops over and over forever. <laughs> it's actually called forever. on start and forever, that's what comes out by default. Yeah, so this is a repeat block that goes on forever. All right, so the alarm on shake. So we'll come back to the while loop condition. So for, but first let's, let's code the, um, the alarm sound, right? So from the music toolbox drawer, uh, drag two play tone blocks to the coding workspace and drop them inside the while loop. All right, so where is the music? All right. So it says to drop two play tone. So there's one and here's two. Okay. So in the play tone blocks, use the drop down menu to change the beat value to half a beat. So half for both of them. There you go. This man has a question. <laughs> yeah, it is loud, isn't it? All right. Uh, and then it says here, change the tone from middle C to high C. And it's going to be loud. There we go. I see. All right. Okay. So try the code on the simulator. So what happens when you shake the micro bit? You might want to turn on. The, you might want to turn on the volume. Um, sorry, I didn't say that beforehand. But uh, here we go. So now what? You 
got to click stop because there's no way to, there is no there is no end look so when it shakes it it plays the sound but there is nothing to turn it off so it was just going to go off forever so um i hope you all stopped it right the stop button did y'all get the stop button okay because <laughs> it can get annoying rather fast um your ears yeah, the volume, turn it down. Um, so what's next? Okay, so now we're gonna make a function uh, process to stop that alarm. So we're gonna use a button. So the alarm goes off, you gotta press a button to turn it off, kind of like old school alarm clocks, right? And now it's on your phone, you just push a button, turn it off. So let's add a condition to our while loop that will turn off the alarm when the user presses a button. So from the logic toolbox drawer, Scroll down to Boolean section, drag a not hexagon block to the workspace. All right, so logic, where is logic? Right here. And we are going to do a not. Drag down to the Boolean section, all right? Comparison conditionals, Boolean. So we're gonna use not, and then drop it into the while loop, replacing the true. All right. So we drop the not and replace the true there. So from the input toolbox drawer, drag the button A is press hexagon shape block into the workspace and drop it into the not block in the while loop. Okay, so we are gonna take the button A is pressed. All right, so we'll go to the input on button A and we're gonna put that No, that wasn't it. It meant the one. The button A is pressed. Right, right, right. Sorry. Mm. Button A is pressed. Notice how the, the shape didn't match. That's why this is hexagon. When I tried to do that. Okay. So now uh, the while loop will only repeat as long as button A has not been pressed. Okay, so let's try that again. Play. So shake. That's weird. Didn't go. Hmm. Oh, where's my knot? What happened to my knot? I totally missed it. Uh, where's my undo button? Here we go. Oh, okay, I see. I replaced the the knot instead of the, the the hexagon in there. So let's try that. So button A is pressed. See, I did this one instead of that one. Anybody notice that? Okay. You didn't say anything. How dare you? All right. So here's the shake. Press the button. Slight delay. What's the question? Me too. I have to spam click it. Yeah, I noticed that it didn't work the first time. Like it wasn't fast enough. Let me try it again. Okay. Or maybe I just did it too fast. Huh. Yeah, isn't that weird? Like I, maybe pressing it too much uh, shook it. Yeah. Try it again. I think you just have to hold it. <laughs> if you if you hold it, it works pretty quickly. See that? Cool. All right. So that uh, was the third. Um, the third activity on the workbook. Let me stop recording.